During the debate in Parliament, but to the more substantive issue of uh, the budget that has been approved, would you say for the first time in probably a long while, the 2023 budget has been put to strict scrutiny by especially the minority? Has been what? Put to scrutiny, has been, you know, like further scrutinized more than, you know, previous budgets. Has been more scrutinized. Yes. That's the word you use. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, and that's the beauty of our democracy. In fact, that is why we elected them to represent us. And it was coming because of the Hank Parliament. It's not like in the past where the party in power would have majority in uh, would have, sorry, would have majority in in uh, in parliament and the more or less the executives uh, paper will come with more or less a rubber stamp on it. So I am particularly happy. I think many Ghanaians are happy that uh, the minority in power is keeping government in check, putting them on their toes to make sure that every city is accounted for. And that is a probity and accountability principle of their, of their uh, party. And I think that every Ghanaian is looking forward for that. Even the MPP MPs, I'm not sure they are not happy that uh, the NDC is scrutinizing the budget. I think we should all do our part. We in the academia and those of you in the media should as well continue to scrutinize mm. uh, government's revenue and expenditure and, and get the best out for it. In, in, in the end, uh, I think uh, the Ghana will mm. win at the end of the day. Right. And, and some 277 billion CDs is the amount that is going to be uh, giving government to run for the I next mean, year. Uh, what are your thoughts on the amount? Where is government going to get that money from? Considering the fact that as we speak, there are clear challenges uh, with revenue mobilization. Uh, hello, Doc, can you hear me? Doc, uh, can you hear me? We seem to be having a little connection challenge. Yeah, new mobilization effort. Um, there are so many sources that they can look at. We have been talking about the property rate. We have been talking about uh, reducing or passing the tax exemptions bill. Um, the government can also be very effective in terms of plugging the loopholes, as we always say, and, and try to be efficient in their revenue mobilization. We have always uh, talked about the government leveraging on uh, digitization and digitalization to in increase revenue mobilization. So I think that digitization should be used uh, very much here uh, to you know, help government plug all the loopholes and be efficient in the revenue mobilization because there's a lot that is leaking because of interpersonal relations. And when we have to do things on data. I think it will reduce the interpersonal relations and the government will get uh, enough from the revenue mobilization. I, I'll give you a typical example. Now the government has passed a property rate. If somebody goes, if an officer goes to somebody's house and says, I'm coming to collect your property rate, but uh, you have to pay cash. I'm not sure that individual will be willing to pay, but if it's more like a short code uh, produced by GRA, so star one, four, seven, high, something like that, uh, these things will help improve the revenue mobilization. Road toll, for example, I'm not sure whether we should go back to the old days of collecting coins on our roads. We should leverage on digitization, use electronic card as uh, University of Ghana is using to collect their tolls on their roads. So let us leverage on digitization. Let's also make sure that we spend on areas that can generate revenue uh, in future for the country. And I think that with these measures, and if they are likely to pass the the, uh, the, the VAT 2.5% VAT increment and also, and also pass the uh, yield levy uh, in the in the state as it is now, you know I have a, a different view about yield levy. I'm sure it is uh, for another discussion. But if they're able to pass this thing, I'm sure they they can uh, get something out of it. In my own estimation, the property rates can rake in about 16 billion, that's about 2% of GDP. Uh, I think that with the other sources of revenue, 
uh, government can uh, do well with that. I think what many Ghanaians are also looking for is the, the, the prudent use of their taxes because if somebody pays taxes and uh, water is not flowing, electricity is uh, out, um, then, then the road is bad, uh, I think that the person will not be willing to pay tax next time. So uh, let the managers of the economy be mindful of the use of the revenue, of the tax mm -hmm. revenue, because it's very painful when you pay tax and then you, you cannot also see what is being used for. I think it's very important mm -hmm. to even get the buy-in of the citizens in the future right. uh, tax instruments. Let us also be prudent uh, in, the, in the management of the funds. Okay. I think many people have right. raised the issue about uh, the VAT okay. increasing uh, prices and causing further inflation. We know the major causes of uh, current inflation, which has right. been uh, exchange rates, uh, passing through the fuel prices and also translating into the mm. uh, transport fares. I, I think that if the exchange rate is, is brought under control and now international crude oil price is being reduced, right. um, it, it will control prices so much. So the government, if the government succeeds in passing the extra 2.5% VAT, they should mm. go through another door to control exchange rates All and right. also make sure that transport fares do not increase because these okay. are the major drivers of prices or inflation in the country. If right. they have that, then they should be able to control inflation. And I'm not sure there should be much fear about a further increment in inflation.